Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to actually take a look at the observed object property wrapper, what it is, how we can use it and what it means to us when we're working with our Swift UI views. So let's get straight into it. So an observed object is similar to a state object in the sense that it allows you to listen to changes from an observable object and reevaluate your views. But there is a difference. So state object ensures that you only have one instance of your observable object, meaning that if your data changes, the whole object will be kept consistent. Observed object would actually cause properties in your observable object to reset, causing you to either lose data or work with invalid data. So when you want to create an instance of your observable object, you always want to use state object. But if this is the case, but if this is the case, then what is the point of observed object? Well, it allows you to easily connect a state object with another view. You could easily also use environment object, but you generally want to reserve environment objects for global app state. So an app state that will be used at the root of your app and shared by multiple screens. And you can actually check out this thinking and this concept that I'm talking about in my video, breaking down environment objects in Swift UI. So in order to see observed objects in action, we're actually going to refactor some of the code from our previous example in our previous video, breaking down state objects in Swift UI. So in this app, we just simulate someone trying to log in and log out um, without using a real API. But if you look at our content views, you'll notice that we have closures here, which perform actions on our source of truth. So logging in and logging out. But what about if we actually want to give these views full responsibility and access to this source of truth directly so they can actually access these functions within them rather than having a closure. Well, I mentioned before that you could use environment objects here and actually pass it into the views, but you don't actually want to do it in this case because our state object is not at the root of our application. So instead, what we want to do is we actually want to use the observed object property wrapper to connect this source of truth for this view to its child views here. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to actually remove our binding on our login view and the closure, and instead look at how we can use observed objects within this login view. So let's go into our login view, and we'll delete these two um, properties, declarations at the top here. And you should notice that we now get an error, which is fine. So instead, what we're going to say is at observed object, so we've got a few errors here because we've now removed those two declarations that we had at the top here. So let's look at our first one in our preview. So our preview is telling us that our view expects the login view model. So this is an easy fix. So all we need to do is just delete all this and then create the initializer again. And then we can just say dot init to create an instance of our login view model for this preview. And you'll notice here that we're actually accessing uh the user and the user here but we obviously don't have access to user anymore so we actually need to use our view model here instead of directly accessing these declarations that don't exist anymore so let's actually update this now so now we have our view model we're accessing our view model but we're using the dollar sign at the start so we can actually bind the user username property within our struct and also the user's password to the secure field and then within our button we can directly access the function to log someone in so to simulate the login we don't need to use the dollar sign here because we're not binding it to anything and then also on the on change we're not actually binding this to anything either so we just access the user from our use login view model and if you watch the previous video, this is possible because we're using the equatable protocol on our struct. So now our observable object view model is being used directly within this child view and we can access the published properties if we wanted to read from it, bind to it, so we can make updates to it and listen to them at the same time, as well as perform actions using the functions within it. So now our content view, we need to actually update this view and actually pass in our state object directly into the login view. So let's go back to our content view and you'll notice that we now have errors because this these um this binding for user and this closure doesn't exist anymore. So instead of using that, let's delete this. And then you'll see now the new initializer takes in our view model. So what we want to do is actually pass it in the view model directly. 
Now you'll notice as well, when you're working with observed objects, you don't actually need to pass in a binding. You just need to just pass in the actual view model to the login view. So now this login view has access to our login view model and it can actually read the properties and perform actions, like I said before. So we've done this for our login view. We want to do the same for our logged in view. So let's go into our logged in view. And let's delete our closure again. And then this time we'll add in our observed object property wrapper again. Cool. So within our logged in view, we now have our observed object property wrapper, which allows us to access our view model. And within our button, we call our logout function directly from it. And in our preview, we just create an init um, we just initialize and create an instance of the login view model. So if we go back to our content view, we'll have an error similar to what we have with the login view. But this time, let's delete this and inject our view model like so. So let's run this now on our Swift UI preview and see what happens. So if we try to log in without entering anything in, it doesn't work. If we try to log in by leaving one text field empty, you'll see that it also doesn't work. So we just put in any kind of like random value like so, and we just hit login. You'll see that it simulates us logging in and it tells us that, hey, we're now logged in. And if we try to log out, you'll see that it logs us out and it also clears the input that we had before. So you should see that it actually has all the functionality that we had in our previous video, except now our views have full access to our source of truth. So the general consensus is that you want to use objects when you're dealing with child views that are trying to access a state object. And if you want to access a root level observable object, then you actually want to use the at environment object um, property wrapper, and this is the way to go. So. That was everything from me in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, then hit the like button and give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a brand new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.